I'm Adam. And I'm Duke. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Hey, Duke, do you believe in witches? I didn't used to. Used to? So that means that you do now? I'm open to the possibility. What made you change your mind? Adam, I swear, I can't find my hat anywhere. Yeah, you're always looking for that thing. What does that have to do with a witch? It's like there's a witch playing tricks on me. You know, it's always something with that hat. Sometimes I wonder if it's got a mind of its own. Maybe the witch animated it, giving the hat a mind of its own. Maybe it's just looking for a little adventure. An adventurous hat, you see. Well, if it wants adventure, it sure picked the right head to sit on. In today's book, Little Witch Hazel is not the kind of witch. She's a tiny witch who lives in the forest, helping creatures big and small. Let's get started. Little Witch Hazel, A Year in the Forest by Phoebe Wall. Spring, the Orphaned Egg. One afternoon as Little Witch Hazel made her way home, she found something peculiar. An orphan egg, the little witch thought. After waiting a while to see if anyone would come and claim it, Little Witch Hazel decided to roll the egg home. After looking and listening and a few taps, Little Witch Hazel made a nest for the egg by the fire and went to bed. When she awoke, there was a poof of a bird staring at her. Good morning. Sleep. The poof was an owl and his name was Otis. Otis grew quickly. It wasn't long before he was too large to stay indoors. You'll be hearing about this at the next Mosswood community meeting. Otis, it is not polite to eat the neighbors. It was much harder for Little Witch Hazel to keep an eye on Otis when he lived outside. Very soon, Otis began to experiment with jumps and flaps and glides until finally he was ready to fly. Ooh. Little Witch Hazel nestled into Otis's feathers and he Ooh. soared smoothly and silently through the night. She loved the feeling of the cool breeze rippling her hair and flapping her cloak. Ooh. With Otis, Hazel could see the forest in ways she had never had before. But Little Witch Hazel knew their time together was running out. For Otis was a wild thing who belonged with other owls. One evening, she watched as he swooped into the forest where another owl waited, their faces glowing like twin moons in the gathering dark. The next morning, when Little Witch Hazel brought Otis his breakfast, he was nowhere to be seen. He left as mysteriously and suddenly as he had arrived, as wild things often do. So Little Witch Hazel blew a kiss to the sky and hoped that someday they would meet again. Did I ever tell you about the time that I saved a raccoon? No, I'd love to hear all about it. It was just a few years back when I was out hiking in the woods. I heard some rustling in the bushes and when I investigated I found a baby raccoon stuck in a trap. A baby raccoon, you say? What'd you do? I carefully released the little critter from the trap and it seemed grateful. It gave me the cutest little look before scampering off into the woods. Made me feel like a real hero that day. He didn't worry about getting rabies or anything? Never crossed my mind. I just saw a creature in need and went to it. Aren't raccoons notorious thieves? Well sure, they can pick locks and get into virtually anything thanks to their dexterous front paws. But what does that have to do with anything? Maybe that's who took your hat. That'd be a rotten way to pay me back for helping it out. Summer, the lazy day. It was the most beautiful day of the summer and Little Witch Hazel was busy. She had a million things to do and it didn't help that everyone else in the forest seemed to be out enjoying the day. Some of us have errands to run, she muttered as she went to return her library books but it appeared that the librarian was on holiday. So, it seemed, was the post gnome, whom Little Witch Hazel found napping in the sun when she tried to send a package. Hazel was sure the cobbler would be open. She was always in her shop, 
and the little witch needed her boots before autumn came. But to her surprise, the cobbler too was out for the day. With a sigh, little witch Hazel headed off on her next errand. Thimbleberries needed picking, and they at least would not be taking the day off. As she picked, a boat full of elves bobbed past on the nearby stream. Hop aboard, one of them called. Join the party. I don't have time, Hazel replied grumpily. Was she the only one in the whole forest who wasn't relaxing? The sun was beating down, and Little Witch Hazel was starting to get hot when she heard another shout from the stream. This time it was Wendell and Nadine. Join us, they called. The Little Witch looked at the clear, cool, bubbling water. I really shouldn't. She looked at her friend's smiling faces. Well, she said, maybe just for a little while. And she hopped on, berries and all. Where are we going? Little Witch Hazel asked. Oh, nowhere in particular, said Nadine. The stream opened out into a pond, and Wendell, who was an accomplished sailor, steered their raft into the open water. Other small boats emerged to bob alongside their own, all full of chattering creatures enjoying the summer day. Don't any of them have things to do? Little Witch Hazel wondered. Oh, I'm sure of it, Wendell replied, but nothing that can't wait until tomorrow. Little Witch Hazel sighed and dipped her feet into the pond. Her whole body seemed to relax as the cool water rushed around her ankles. All of her errands, which had seemed so very urgent, were beginning to feel further and further away. All she had to do was sit and listen and breathe in the fragrant summer air. As dusk fell, a faint tune wafted across the breeze. It grew louder as they approached an island where glowing lights were strung up between the reeds. A band was playing, and from their boats, beasts of all shapes and sizes danced and clapped and sang along. The friends were getting hungry, so Wendell dropped anchor and they shared a picnic supper while the band played. Nadine unwrapped her tea cakes, Wendell bartered, with a few nearby gnomes for some cheese, and Little Witch Hazel shared her berries. It wasn't until the moon rose that Hazel, Wendell, and Nadine began to make their way home across the now glassy quiet pond. What a wonderful day, thought Little Witch Hazel contentedly. Perhaps tomorrow I'll get something done. You ever have one of those lazy days when you're just planning to do a whole lot and you couldn't find the motivation? There was this one time during summer break when I had big plans to organize my entire classroom. I was all set to be the most productive teacher ever. You know what happened? Do tell. Well, I woke up early, made a list of tasks, was ready to conquer the world. Then I found myself on the couch watching a rerun of some old western. Time just slipped away and before I knew it, it was lunchtime. You teachers ain't so different from us cowboys after all. I reckon lazy days can sneak up on anyone. That's right, lazy days don't discriminate. So did you ever have a day like that? Oh, you betcha. There was this one time I planned to mend the fence all along the south pasture. I had my tools ready and everything. But as soon as I saddled up to my horse, old Trigger, I realized I'd forgotten my hat. Spent the whole day searching for it and never did get to that fence. And you're still looking for the hat to this day. Sounds like your hat has a knack for hiding when you need it the most. Well, it was a different hat. Autumn, the haunted stump. <gasps> Little witch Hazel was working in her garden when she first heard the noise. It was the kind of noise that sent prickles through your whiskers and chilled you right down to your boots. Towering toadstools, thought Little witch Hazel, a shiver running down her spine. Whatever could that be? A moment later, the Mole Sisters emerged from their hole in a frenzy. Oh, little witch Hazel, did you hear that noise? The sisters cried. It sounds like the laugh of a hobgoblin robber, squeaked the moles, wringing their paws. The kind who might steal our collection of rubies, or our stashes of stones, or our caches of geodes. Well said Hazel, feeling a bit braver now that she had company. There's only one way to find out. 
So together, they headed into the woods to find the source of the sound. Soon they came to the mouse's house, where baby's wails joined the eerie howls coming from the forest. Have you heard it too? A frazzled mouse papa said. My mouselings can't sleep a wink for this terrible racket. I think it's a sleep sucker out to zap all our naps. <laughs> well, said Hazel, come along and find out. It's an ogre with huge stinky feet. It's a bird with a razor sharp beak. So together, Little Witch Hazel, the Mole Sisters, Mouse Papa, and his mouselings headed farther into the forest. Soon they came across Newt, who was trying to hide under a log. You better clear off if you know what's good for you, he called. There's a terrible ghost haunting that stump. A horrible ghoul with long ghostly claws and long ghostly teeth. How to eat little beasts like us. <coughs> little Witch Hazel, the Mole Sisters, Mouse Papa, the Mouselings, and Newt all turned to the nearby stump. Sure enough, another howling, yowling, bellowing wail came from within. Little Witch Hazel's heartbeat quickened as she approached the stump. As she grew closer, the noise grew louder. Hobgoblins and sleep suckers, birds, ogres, and ghosts swirled inside her mind. Until finally, with a burst of bravery, Little Witch Hazel flung open the door to find the tiniest troll she had ever seen. Oh, hello, said Little Witch Hazel. The noise stopped as the tiny troll stared at the little witch in surprise. Why are you crying? Little Witch Hazel asked. I'm new in town, and I have no one to share my supper with, the tiny troll whispered. I see, said the little witch. Well, in that case, I think we can help. So together, the neighbors all crowded into the stump for supper. The little creature laid out a very beautiful place setting for each of them. It's a fungus soup with pine needles and moss, the little troll beamed eagerly. Delicious, they all murmured. By the time supper was over, the old stump felt warm and full and everyone was yawning happily. Next time you're lonely, just come over and knock, Hazel offered, and the tiny troll smiled. And so, with calls of thank yous and good night, Little Witch Hazel, the Mole Sisters, Mouse Papa, the Sleepy Mouselings, and Newt all headed home through the still and silent forest, content with the knowledge that they had made a new friend. That reminds me of one time when I was out on the range. I was sure I saw a ghostly figure lurking in the distance, had my heart racing and all. So I hopped on my horse and rode over there like the wind, only to find out it was just old Farmer Joe wearing a sheet trying to scare off the crows from his cornfield. Farmer Joe sure knows how to keep things interesting. Another time, I was staying at a dusty old cabin out in the desert. It was dark and the wind was howling. I heard these eerie sounds like they were straight out of one of them horror stories. I tell you, it sent shivers down my spine. I thought for sure that cabin was haunted. Sounds like quite the ordeal. Oh, it was. By the next morning, I found out them spooky sounds were just the wind whistling through a broken window and rattling some old bones that the, the previous owner left behind. Ain't nothing to be scared of. Just Mother Nature's way of telling her own stories. It's funny how our imaginations can get the best of us sometimes. Winter. The Blizzard. One crisp winter morning, Little Witch Hazel smelled a certain something in the air and made her nose tingle. The sky was a dusty shade of peach, and the frozen ground crackled under her boots. What a beautiful day to be out and about, she thought. First on her rounds were the chipmunks. One of the children had a toothache, probably from biting a frozen nut again. Next time you dig up an acorn, let it thaw first. Next, there was a mole with a thorn in his paw. A lonely dryad who just wanted company. And a crow with a frog in its throat. Her day was so busy that little witch Hazel hadn't noticed the weather changing. Milky clouds now hung low and heavy in the darkening sky as she ran through the forest to her last patient's house. Mrs. Rabbit had given birth the week before, 
and the four kits were already starting to grow thin, velvety coats. Little Witch Hazel weighed each bunny, prescribed two cups a day of raspberry leaf and nettle tea to the new mother, and packed up her things to head home. The warm glow of the rabbit's window had just faded from view when the first flakes began to fall, and it wasn't long before the dark forest sparkled under the bright dusting of fresh snow. I'll be home soon, thought Little Witch Hazel. I doubt this will keep up for much longer. But it did. Soon the woods were blanketed. Every stump and stone along the familiar route home was now completely obscured under the mounds of white. The tall, dark trees, whose branches usually danced and swayed in the wind, now sagged and creaked under their new coats. Little Witch Hazel shivered. Just keep to the path, she told herself. You can't be far from home now. But the path seemed to have disappeared. Little Witch Hazel suddenly felt very alone, and very cold, and very tired. I'll just rest for a few minutes, she thought, then maybe I'll be able to find my way back. Then suddenly, just as she had begun to curl up and close her eyes, a huge tawny shape swooped out of the swirling sky and picked her up. The next thing Little Witch Hazel knew, she was soaring through the night, nestled against very warm, very soft, and very familiar feathers. Otis, whispered Little Witch Hazel. Ooh. Ooh, said Otis. Otis had no trouble finding home through the swirling, billowing clouds of white. Inside Little Witch Hazel's house, all was warm and safe. Otis tucked her into bed and tucked himself into his old roost. Then they both slept soundly through the cold winter night. That reminds me of a time when I was trying to do something nice for old Miss Jenkins down at the general store. Oh yeah? Well, you see, Miss Jenkins had this pesky cat, Mr. Whiskers, always causing trouble in the store, knocking stuff off the shelves and such. So I decided to help her out by wrangling that, that cat and taking him back home. Figured it'd be a nice thing to do. That does sound nice. So what happened next? I couldn't see a darn thing with all that snow blowing. I tried to find my way back to Miss Jenkins' place, but I got lost real quick. Lost in a snowstorm with a mischievous cat? That's quite a pickle you got yourself into. I reckon I was out there for hours wandering around in the cold when I stumbled upon your school. Oh, I remember that. It turned into quite an unexpected adventure. And in the end, we managed to get you and Mr. Whiskers safely back to Miss Jenkins' place. It was a day I won't forget. Sometimes doing a good deed can lead to some wild adventures, especially when you're trying to be a hero for a pesky cat. If you want to be a hero, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm Adam, and I'm Duke, and this is Where There's Williams, There's a Way. Did you know witch hazel is a medicinal plant? The bark and leaves can be used to produce a topical astringent. Witch hazel branches have been traditionally used by dowsers to locate water. The distinctive petals of witch hazel are temperature sensitive. They become reflexed when cold and unfurl when warm.